Have you been in the market for a smart interconnected smoke detector, but don't want one that gets bogged down with other smart devices that you don't need, like cameras, doorbells, and the like? That also has an interconnected base station, then the Xsense Link Pro combination smoke and carbon monoxide alarm could be what you're looking for. I'm Wanderer001, let's get into it. I'm going to start things off by saying Xsense did provide me this kit for the purposes of testing, but I have purchased other Xsense products on my own, which is why I agreed to review this item. As I stated, it is a system, so let's take a look at what we get with it. Open things up, satisfaction card, bunch of carbon monoxide information, basic setup guide. So here is our smoke CO alarm and then the mounting hardware for it. And on the back of it, you can see the plate already exists and they have a battery right there for you. So you get a set of three of those. And then over here, wall wart, micro USB cable, the rest of your mounting hardware. And then here, base station. So if you don't have other Xsense equipment, you can link them up using that base station. We're gonna start with the base station first. This base station is actually compatible with a lot of other devices that Xsense sells. The base station itself has a 100 decibel alarm built in. If we flip it over, we could see the speaker right there. You also have these four rubber feeties that raise the base station off of a surface. And I will say, despite this being plugged in all the time, it does not actually get hot like other base stations I've tested. We also have a silence button right there to quiet an alarm that we might hear if we're close enough to the base station. The X on the top here will light up blue when the device is powered. You get a set of three identical smoke detectors, all with a 10-year usability and a five-year life battery on the back. It is a talking alarm, meaning it will identify what the hazard is and its location. It also has a 360 degree air intake for better smoke and CO reading and takes three air samples every 10 seconds. There are two sensors equipped in the combination smoke and CO detector, an electrochemical and a photoelectrical sensor giving you more accurate readings than if you just had one type of sensor. On the front, if we come a little closer, we can see we have an LED screen right up front. It's gonna let you know in the upper left-hand corner your connectivity, over on the right-hand corner, your battery life left, and then here it's CO and then parts per million. Notice it's at zero as it should be. And then you have a status light right here. And one of the things that I wanna point out is if I tap this. This is only a test. The alarm will set test canceled. The LED screen only lights up when you are testing it or there's an actual emergency smoke or fire, meaning you can have this in a bedroom and not have it disturb your sleep with a bright LED screen, which I greatly appreciate. If we flip it over really quickly, here is your mounting plate right there, and then your included CR123A battery, again, giving you five years of usable life for the one battery. Because this is a smart smoke detector system, there is a setup process. It's not terribly difficult. So I already have my account set up and we want to add our devices. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to the plus sign in the upper right hand corner, and then we're gonna select what it is we want to add. So in our case, we want to first add a base station because if we select water sensor, we have to add the base station first. So if you don't know you have to add the base station, you can click on the water sensor and it'll say add the base station, or I will come in and say add the base station. We are doing the SBS50 because that's the one that looks like this as opposed to the more tall looking one. So we're gonna hit that and then it's gonna say, hey, it wants access to utilize our camera. So we're going to do only this time. And then there's a QR code on the bottom that we are gonna scan. So we're gonna do that off camera really quickly. And once you do that, you're given this information. So name, location, so home, or select a uh, room. So in this case, I'm going to create a room and we're just going to say that this is going to live in my living room. Uh, we have to create a home. So this is just going to be called home because, well, I only have one. It's asking for the location. So in my case, it's the United States. And then uh, select room as needed. 
Uh, so we're going to say living room and create. And there we go. We have now successfully created the name and location. We're going to select next. Now we have to turn on the base station, which, which means we have to take and plug in our base station. So for the purposes of this, I'm quickly going to plug that in off camera and then power on the base station right here. So we'll give that a moment. You see it's flashing different colors right there. So once we're flashing this yellow color, you're going to press and hold that button on the back of it right there for five seconds. And just to confirm, all right, so it says, yes, confirming that it's blinking yellow after pressing. We're going to select next, and I'm going to say only this time, so it figures out my location. Ah, so make sure your Bluetooth is on, because this is going to search for the device using Bluetooth, all right? And since I'm already on my IoT network, I'm going to quickly put in the password, and then obfuscate that from view, and select next. And once you do that, it uh, kind of pops up and says, make sure that it's right, and then shows you in plain text the actual uh, password name. I kind of wish it didn't do that, but yes, I'm going to confirm that that is correct. Connecting to Wi-Fi. Very loud. Uh, letting me know it's connecting to Wi-Fi, so it's Wi-Fi connected. That was really quick. So it says it's connected to Wi-Fi, even though the counter says there's still about 53 seconds. Uh, so it is connecting device. We see blue right there, so the blue should be good. And there we go, all finished. So we're gonna say finished. All right, so we can silence an alarm by pressing the base station. So we can have the ability to turn off the ability to silence an alarm. We're gonna leave that on and select save. All right, and from here, you can connect other devices, which we kind of need to. We select the plus sign in the upper right hand corner. We have our combination CO alarm. And then this is the Link Pro version. And then we have to make sure that our base station is up to date. So we're going to do that very quickly. And the base station's firmware is updating right now. Once your base station firmware is ready, you select OK, and then you can come back and add it. You can assign a name, and we're just going to call this Combo Alarm 1. This will be in Custom Location, Master Bedroom. And we can say for location names with a voice, we can select that, say Master Bedroom, Next. So we now flip it over, pop the back off, and then we're going to remove this tab, make sure that the battery polarities are matching correctly. So negative and positive. Whoa. Yep, that's, uh, that's there. Next. Quickly double press the test. When the device announces ready to connect. Hello from XSense. Location not set. Press the location button to select a location. One, two. Ready to connect. Ready to connect. Next. Ready to add a device. Connected. Device added. And just like that. Base station said ready to add a device, and then this said device connected. And here we go. So we can continue to add more devices. And in this case, I'm going to add one more of the smoke detectors. So we're going to do that, that one. I call that number two. And then we're going to select the voice room, office. We're going to do this again. Pop that off. Pull the tab. Listen to the loud beep. Wait for that to turn itself on. Hello from Excess. Location not set. Press the location button to select a location. Going to double tap. Ready to connect. Ready to connect. Ready to add a device. Connected. Device added. Just like that. Now we've added these two to our base station so that we can see what we're looking at. Now that you've seen setup is not terrible at all to do, you might be wondering, what can I actually do in the application? Well, the app is broken down into two parts. You've got your base station and then the smoke detector itself. So let's take a look at what we can do in the app for both. This is the Xsense app for the Xsense Link Pro combination smoke and carbon monoxide alarm with base station. I'm going to select the sprocket icon, which brings us into the actual options for the base station. That would be the same as if I just tapped on the base station image itself. You get a nice depiction of what it is right there. You have your naming convention, so I just called it base station. You can tell what room it's in. So right now I have it as part of my living room. I can move that to a different location if I wanted to. We also have our volume control for mid-max because there is a speaker on the base station itself, letting you know if there's a water alarm or an alarm elsewhere. Now we have our silent alarm on the back of the base station. There is a button. This option will allow you to use that button to turn off an alarm, so silence it. Right down here, we have our Wi-Fi network, device information, which I'm not going to show you because a lot of sensitive information in there, and then device sharing, so similar to how we did before, except right within the settings. And that's everything that you can do with the base station. 
we can see right here, it's going to tell you the name of the alarm, its location, its status, if it has detected smoke, what your current level of CO is, as well as its connection level to the base station and its battery level. You also have a sprocket icon right here, which is going to bring you into your settings or tapping on the picture itself brings you into the settings as well. Up at the top here, we have our smoke indicator and our CO level. Notice neither are lit up because nothing's happening. And then here we have our battery and connection indicators as well. Coming down, we have the ability to change the name of the smoke detector. We have the ability to change its location. We can also select testing the device and we'll test this device and it will sound the alarm. Coming down, we have CO alarm history. Here you can see I don't have anything because the CO hasn't been off the charts. And then I have event history. This will be an event history of CO smoke and anything else that has happened. We can also come up here and select individual days if we had something that was really going off and we wanna go back and see what was happening. We have notifications. Here we can have what notifications we'd like to get. So smoke alarm triggered, yes. Smoke alarm ending, not necessarily. CO alarm, yes. CO alarm triggered. CO alarm ended, eh, maybe not. Device silence, don't need to know about that. Don't need to know about device testing. Device malfunction, yes, and low battery. So you can customize this as you like. You also have the ability for offline notification. Device information is gonna show you some sensitive information. Won't show you that, but you can find your serial number and firmware and the like in there. And then help and feedback. If you select this, this will open up XSense help page, and then you can select your particular device that you're looking for information about. And really, it's a smoke detector that's connected to the base station. There's not a lot of options that you're gonna change in the application, but I like the fact that it's there, and if the alarm happens to go off, you'll also get notified via the app. So that's everything that you could do for the Xsense Link Pro Combination Smoke and Carbon Monoxide Alarm in the Xsense app. If you're not super technologically savvy, don't be afraid of this smoke detector. But me saying that this actually works as a smoke detector means absolutely nothing. Let me show you a test I ran to make sure that this actually worked. Well, not the perfect way of testing this. This is the only way I could think to do it where I could get the alarm and my phone all in one place. And the base station's also over there. So can smoke test. Smoke alarm silenced. And there we could see it says smoke, yes. It's still blinking red because I only silenced it. And then if we come in here, we can see the event history. This will be testing the interconnectedness of the smoke detector with the base station. Can of smoke. Over here, I have two of the connections. This one's done through the base station. This one was done manually. We're gonna see what things happen. What I was able to see is using the base station as an interconnect point. This not only talked to the other smoke detectors, I have a CO alarm from XSense as well, all the way in my basement, which you saw that also was going off. So as long as you have them all connected via the base station, they will interconnect and let you know, which is great. So you can have a fire on the first floor. And if you're in the basement and don't have a smoke detector down there like you should, if you have a CO alarm down there from XSense, it'll let you know. That's a great feature. With anything that I test, I always wanna point out if there are shortcomings or cons with them. In the case of the XSense Link Pro combination detector here, one of the largest issues that I ran into was the fact that the smoke detectors themselves can be interconnected, both with the 
base station, but with them cell. And if you interconnect the smoke detectors via the base station, everything works perfectly fine. But if you read the manual, you may get confused in that you can interconnect the smoke detectors to each other. If you interconnect them that way, they will no longer communicate with the base station, taking away one of the primary advantages that you get with this in that if something goes off, it'll tell the base station and then tell the other smoke detectors or other XSense connected devices that talk to the base station. I wish XSense did a little better in documenting the differences between these two features. I myself even had to reach out to them when I was testing this to let them know, hey, this disconnected from the base station once I interconnected them to each other. As long as you know that ahead of time, you'll be okay. Just connect them to the base station and they will interoperate with each other. In conclusion, I've purchased a lot of XSense products on my own. And the fact that this works with the base station that I already had makes it even better. So if you're looking to create a smart interconnected home that doesn't necessarily watch you, but will alert you if there are problems, then you can't go wrong with the XSense Link Pro combination smoke and carbon monoxide alarm with base station. If you're in the market, I can strongly recommend it. If this sounds like the detector you've been looking for, I will have a link where you can pick one up for yourself in the description area below. If you appreciate the time and effort that goes into making comprehensive videos like this, make sure to hit that like button to help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here and want to be notified of my next review, hit that subscribe button. Not sure this is the right smoke detector for you? On screen now, you'll see two other reviews that I've done to help you make a more informed decision for yourself.